Hey, so today we're talking about the gear that I use to film trail running, ultra marathons, big endurance efforts. This gear package is built around what can I carry with me for, you know, I've taken this up to 13 miles in the mountains when you count in hiking in, following an athlete for a little while, and then hiking back out. Getting to those hard to reach spots is awesome. That footage looks amazing. And I want to bring more than a GoPro with me. And so this kit is kind of built around what can I take with me, but that's not going to break my back, make it super hard to keep up with an athlete if I have to follow them for a long period of time. This whole kit is built around my Solomon eight liter, trail running vest. This is just what I use normally, you know, for like trail running, that kind of thing. If you can, I would say, hey, go up to the 12 liter or the 10 liter version, just because you get a little bit more space. But this is just what I have to work with. It straps on super well and it sits super tight. So it's not just like bouncing around like a backpack. Of course, that does come with some size limitations of what you can carry. But I'm going to kind of give you an idea of what it is that I'm carrying in this as well as in my hands to accomplish the goal out there on the side of the mountain. So of course, you're probably wondering what is the camera of choice? That is the Sony a7 IV. Why not the a7S III? Simple. Sometimes I got to shoot photo as well as video. And so the a7 IV is the perfect match of features and price and size and weight. Typically on the front now, I'm shooting on it right now with my other camera. Typically on the front, I will have the Sony 28 millimeter F2 prime because that's a really nice, super lightweight, super compact. 28 is a really good frame for me. I will say, you know, the 4K 60 crop on the a7 IV is a little tight because then it's looking a little bit more like a 35. And if you don't have a lot of room on the trail, you're really going to be stuck with a lot of medium shots of the athlete that you're following. I have tried out the Tamron 20 to 40. Really like that lens. Still thinking about whether it's worth the investment because I'm not stoked on the autofocus. I've also tried out the Sony 20 millimeter G Master. Fantastic lens, but a little limiting just because 20 is a little wide if you want to get in a little bit tighter for those close ups. Like it's just going to look like a wide angle close up. You may or may not like that look. The 16 to 35, of course, is also a great lens. I've used that. It's just a little too heavy for what I'm doing. So, that is the brain of the operation. Typically I'm carrying two batteries for this. I don't always shoot through one. The battery life is so much more improved with these latest generation Sony cameras, but I'm typically carrying a spare just in case something happens. And then I've got on top here, the Sennheiser shoe mic. I just chose this over the road video mic because it's a little bit cheaper. I'm also bringing with me uh, some ND filters. My go-to variable ND right now is the moment pair of two to five stop and six to nine stop ND filters. I have the 82 millimeter versions. I know I could save a little bit weight by buying smaller ones that fit the 28 millimeter right on, but I just like to buy one set of ND filters that work for the vast majority of lenses. So I'm using step up rings to accomplish that. And then as far as stabilization goes, I don't always bring a gimbal with me. A lot of that is dictated upon the speed that the athlete is going to be going at how far or how hard of a hike it is because the gimbal is going to take up one of your hands almost all of the time. If I'm hiking in with a second person, we've got two people shooting, that makes it a little bit easier because you can pass it back and forth. But if I am taking a gimbal, it's the Ronin RS2. I have tried DJI's smaller gimbals. Uh, I believe it was the SC was the old version and now they have a mini or something like that. Too many, too many brand names, DJI. Like, let's just simplify somehow, please. Neither of those were up to the task. They failed me at important moments. I have traveled literally all over the world. I've traveled all over the country. This gimbal has been everywhere with me. It's gotten dusty, dirty, wet. It still keeps kicking. Um, definitely if I'm running, I'm taking this off, save some weight. And then I have this, uh, this extra handle back here. Love the opportunities that it gives you for low shots, for different angles. But if, it's def if I'm gonna be out there for a while, I will probably take this off because every single ounce counts. And then of course, if I have the opportunity, if I'm somewhere that I can fly or I'll have enough time to fly, I'm taking a drone with me. The drone that I've got right here is the DJI Mini 3 Pro. I have bought this specifically for one reason and that is because this fits really well in the back of my running vest. It's super light, it's super small. I mean, I'm looking at like 30 minutes of flight time and that is plenty enough. I can fly two or three times on a battery. I will say like, yeah, versus the larger Mavics, the flagship, you know, the Mavic 2, Mavic 3 Pro. Yeah, you're, you're giving up 
speed, you're giving up stability and high winds, you're definitely giving up camera quality, but I am trading all of that for being able to get this drone to places that nobody else is getting it. And then the other part of my kit, and this comes with a caveat, I don't really like this. The DJI controller, it's got the screen in it. What don't I like about it? So I always take my phone when I'm going out on these missions into the mountains because that's my emergency communication device. If I can get service, uh, that's good enough. I'm also checking athlete trackers, race trackers to just see where people are on course. I can also use that for maps. I have an offline map for navigation along the trail. So if I'm already taking my phone, this is just dead weight. So the last thing that I'll talk about as far as stuff that I bring along is not camera equipment. It's all the stuff that goes along with it. I've learned the hard way that you do need to pack more than just the cameras, even if you're just hiking up literally to get one shot and back because you never know when you're gonna have to sit up there for an hour, for two hours, it might rain, all these sort of things. So uh, soft flasks, I'm bringing these. They're like a water bottle. They go really well in the front of your running vest. I'll bring one of these at least for sure. And so along with that, you know, you also have to be fueling. Uh, I have some snacks. <laughs> it's the best part about this, uh, this whole ultra running sport. You just eat fun snacks. Like always have fruit snacks with me. Always got a Bobo bar. Um, got electrolytes. I, I don't always like rip gels out on the trail because that just feels like a little bit weird. I'm not racing, but sometimes I will just travel with one because if you need that quick little boost to keep up with somebody, those are a great way to do it. We got our little electrolyte pack there. And then also other stuff that I'm bringing, I'm always bringing some kind of a windbreaker layer at the very least, you know, if you look at the forecast and it's gonna rain, you know, I'm definitely bringing my Gore-Tex layer. I'm gonna bring trash bags to wrap up my drone, wrap up my camera, all that sort of stuff because there's nothing worse than getting stuck out there in the rain, getting soaked through. It's always better to have this lightweight layer. And this again, also I can wrap up the drone, I can wrap up the drone controller, it gives it a little bit of padding so stuff isn't jabbing into my back in my running pack. And I'm also always taking a buff or, you know, a turtle fur neck tube. These are just, they come in handy for everything, whether it's, again, like wrapping up a piece of gear or sun protection, or there are a lot of mosquitoes and you kind of just want to cover your face for a little while. All of these are valid uses for one of these. You'll see, again, athletes out on the trail are carrying these for all sorts of different reasons. You should be carrying one as well. So there you have it. What's what's so cool about these adventure projects that I've gotten a chance to work on is that there are some epic views and there's some amazing things to be seen out on trail and out on course. The big issue <laughs> being you can't drive. You just can't drive. You can't take your car to most of these places. You can't take it to the top of Mount Whitney. I've taken the A74 to the top of Mount Whitney. You can't drive to the top of Mount Baldy. I've taken the A74. I've taken the drone, both to the top of Mount Baldy. These are the things that are gonna push my content to the next level. And I hope that this kind of just helps you wrap your head around, okay, I want to get out there and make better adventure films. How is that possible when the athletes are running and they're moving, they're not static? How can we start to keep up with them and bring that content just a little bit closer to the experience that these athletes are having out on trail? So hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, Drew, do your magic.